Welcome to the J. Lewis Crozier Library's painting um, program. Today we are painting a holiday image. My name is Joanne. I'm the assistant director here at the library. And we're going to be painting a remembrance candle for a special someone in your life, maybe a really wonderful holiday memory that you have. We're going to put the um, microphones on mute for the participants. If you have a question, issue, or need assistance, if you use your chat, or maybe just wave um, my wonderful producer who's making the video <laughs> Um, and live stream available for folks to watch and participate. She'll try and answer any questions um, as soon as we see you uh, either signaling through the chat or raising your hand and giving us a wave. So today when we paint, we're gonna be working with four colors. The main color is the background color. We're gonna use phthalo blue and we're going to get started we're gonna use our fat brush, which is really just a little chip brush. Um, everybody was given a chip brush and an angle brush, and we're gonna get started laying down the background color. We have a nice, big, deep, full cup of blue, and we're gonna dip our brush directly into it. And I like to try and get some of my edges out of the way first. I think it's always nice to paint your uh, canvas all along the edges and that way if you don't want to spend and invest in frames, this gives it a finished look and it can go right up on the wall like this. So of course we know we're gonna be able to do three edges without having an issue and then we won't have a place to hold for the fourth, then you can sit it into your um, easel or lay it down on your tabletop to do the fourth edge. So I'm just gonna go around the edges and I'm using the blue straight from the cup if you prefer to have a palette, you can put some of the paint from the cup directly onto the paper plate that we share. So I have one edge done, I'm gonna go, and I'm just gonna keep working my way around until I have all my edges painted. If you're just joining us, we're starting off using the phthalo blue straight from the cup to paint the background. And before we actually do the background surface, I'm working on painting each of the edges all the way around the canvas. And I wanna thank anyone who has participated in our past classes and is joining us again. We're really happy to have you back. And for those of you who are new to joining the paint class, welcome. We okay, so paint your, she's already started. Um, the meeting is already started. So you have to paint. So I'm just going through and I'm painting all around the edges. I have one edge left. I'm gonna sit my painting down to do the final edge. Things that long canvases are a little challenging for someone short like me with short arms. But you can see I'm painting my fourth edge on the canvas. And we're using the thalo blue, which is the main color for the background. And we're using the fat chip brush to get started. And I'm not mixing any other colors with it right now. I'm strictly laying down this gorgeous, beautiful blue. Once I have my edges done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start laying colors right on the canvas. Just let the people who came late catch up. If you're just arriving, do not worry, we're going to have some downtime in between laying down the blue before we progress, so you'll have plenty of time to catch up. But for anyone who's already been um, working on their edges, you can go ahead and start stroking with the chip brush, just nice up and down broad strokes to cover the canvas surface. Okay. We'll use the, the angle brush later on when we're ready to start putting in detail. But for right now, just gently stroking up and down. You can see it's such a beautiful color blue. And we're just covering the surface of the canvas 
You don't want to see the canvas texture showing through. So if you keep moving your brush up and down across, that helps erase that and smoothen it out. If your paint is particularly thick, you can gently just touch the tip of your brush into your water cup and that will um, help thin and smoothen out the paint. But again, I'm just stroking up and down, back and forth across the canvas surface. If you came in late and don't have your edges done, you can always go back when we're done and paint the edges of the canvas after we've completed the image. I wanna lay this blue in as my background color. And I'm just going up and down. If this is too long for you, you could turn your canvas sideways and go side to side. There's a couple of painters that I see every now and then online. Some of them paint upside down. They start and they paint an entire painting and you can't really see what's going on. And then they flip it and here's an image and they've just really done the entire image from start to finish, but kind of back. So I'm continuing to coat the entire surface and I'm just stroking up and down. Don't worry if you can see your brush strokes, that's not going to be an issue. It actually will add to the background when we're done. So I have my entire surface covered. I'll wait for other folks to catch up and be able to do that. The next color that we're going to be using, if you want to get your cup ready, we're going to use the brown. And what I would say to do is to take some of the brown out of your cup, scoop it with your brush, and put it onto your palette. We want to save what's left in the cup. Believe it or not, the only thing we're really going to need it for is the wick. And then we'll do a little bit of definition in the candle with the brown. So I'm going to put that out of the way and just use what I have scooped onto my palette. I didn't wash my brush in between. I just dipped in and put a big plop right on the plate. And I'm gonna be very bold and just start stroking some of that brown directly on the outside edges. I'm gonna do the brown primarily at the top. We're gonna to put a darker shade into the blue at the top and then we're gonna work white in at the bottom. So I'm gonna keep dabbing a little bit of this brown and working up and down and blending it with that beautiful blue. And you can see it almost seems as though we're adding a black. This particular brown that we're using is raw umber and it comes across almost like a black. And it deepens and gives some depth to the blue. I'm doing it kind of like in a little bit of a halo around the top of the painting. Right? I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom and I'm not going to coat the whole center, but I am going to pull it down until I feel like I have a nice shadowy dimensional look to the background. It's not just a big solid blue. You can pull down a little bit. It's a great idea to step back out every now and then and take a look. I can see my image on the video screen so I have a good idea of how much of this is darkened but if you're right up front working with it you may not be able to see that until you step back. After I have enough of the brown blended in with the blue I'm pretty satisfied. I might go ahead and put a little bit of that on the sides where I had my blue just to cover and make it reflect what's actually on the canvas. Same thing with the top I'll just Pack a little bit of the brown up at the top. I am going to clean my brush at this stage. We're not going to clean our brush all that often. We're going to just keep going from one color to the next. But I want to add white. It doesn't matter if there's still some blue in my brush. That's okay, but I want to get the brown out. And that was on the outside. So I'm just dipping my brush in water. There's still blue and that's okay. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the white that I did with the brown. I'm going to take my cup and scoop some white out to keep it separate because we're going to add other elements of white and we want to make sure it stays pretty white. I'm going to be really sparse with how much I use. I'm kind of wiping extra paint off my brush 
rolling my brush and I'm just gonna kind of go like this and fleck a little bit of white here and there and then I'll go back in and blend it. I don't want it to be too heavy. I don't want it to dominate. Just a little bit, it kind of reminds me of, um, when I go to Longwood, they do this beautiful light show. And this kind of reminds me of the fountains with the light being shown on it. And I'm really just doing a, about a six to eight inch band across the bottom. So we have the dark color going like in an arc at the top. And now I've just gently stroked some white across the bottom. And this is where we're gonna take a break. And anyone who's not caught up to this point has time to finish mm -hmm. filling in. And I'm going to put my brush in a water cup. You may have to, I might recommend stepping away after you've cleaned your brush at this point and getting clean water. And could you ask if people, if we've got multiple people mm -hmm. and one camera in the chat, could they put in there? Okay. Sure. So for all of our folks who are joining us today, we know that there's some who are in groups. We, um, librarians like to keep records of everything that we do, everything that we buy, everything we add to our book collection. We're going to ask today that if you have more than one person in your group painting with us today, can you please enter the individual names into the chat so that we have a total count of who's participating today. Right now, my canvas is very damp in the center and it's still damp around the top. And I want that to dry, so I might wave it. You could take a paper plate and you could fan your paper plate on it like this. And we just want to encourage it to dry. This is the perfect time for folks who came in a little bit after we began to get caught up. But basically we want this beautiful shot of light blue at the bottom and we added brown to mix at the top. And now I'm going to share with you wonderful facts about candles, because why not learn something while we're creating? So I did a little research and I found out that the earliest surviving candles originated in China in 200 BC. The Chinese candles were made from whale fat. Isn't that exciting? During the Middle Ages, tallow candles were most commonly used. And tallow candles had um, animal fat, and that's what made um, a tallow candle. Romans were the first to make dip candles with the tallow, and they would dip repeatedly to get um, single candles thicker and thicker by dipping more and more. So there's a couple different reasons that people like candles. One is because a candle symbolizes bringing light to our wishes and desires. A candle can be lit as a prayer for peace or a request for healing. Lighted candles are reflections of our emotional self and they help to illuminate our hearts when we feel burdened. There is the significance of a candle in a window. You'll often see that on um, greeting cards and imagery where there's a, a home and there's a candle waiting in the window. And the significance for that is um, when a family member is away, or if somebody has passed and died, it can be a remembrance, letting them know they're missed. It's also seen as a silent prayer for safe return of someone who's absent. And it's a sign to say that someone is home, tending the fire, missing them and waiting for them. Fun fact, US retail candle sales, and I believe this was for 2013, so I'm sure it's only gone up. I know they talk about candle sales escalating dramatically during the pandemic. But in 2013, Americans spent 3.14 million on candles, which is a pretty big number. The National Candle Association says that there are 80% um, of all candles sold here are made here in the US. And they're sold in three types of places, a specialty or gift shop, a department store or a mass merchandiser and 35% of candle sales occur around the Christmas holiday season. We use more than a billion pounds of wax to produce the candles sold in the US. And according to um, this research, there are 10,000 different candle scents available to our consumers. So I'm gonna stop there and ask you to take a look at your canvas 
and you want this area here, because that's where we're going to work next, you want it to be dry to the touch. If it's not, again, you can certainly use a paper plate and do this, but already mine is dry. So the one beautiful thing about acrylic is it is quick drying and you can keep working with acrylic. I have my brush pretty much cleaned out from before. If you look, when I mix yeah. it, the blue is really bright. So it's okay if you have a little bit of blue. And if you use some of the paper towels that we included, that will help take out some of the excess color. We're gonna use a rough estimate to measure where we're placing the candle onto the canvas. So I don't want anyone to panic if it's not exactly matching what you see in my image. This is your painting. It's your image, and if your candle is fat and squat or long and skinny, that is perfectly okay. I'm going to use my chip brush, the thick brush, and I'm going to measure, if this is the brush that was included in everyone's bag, I'm gonna measure the distance of the brush, and you can mark it with your finger or grab a pencil if you'd be more comfortable, and that's about how far down I'm gonna want the top of my candle. If you take your paintbrush and hold it like this, we're gonna go up approximately three to four inches from the bottom. We wanna be able to have room to paint that spray of, um, I would say greenery, but it's all white. <laughs> but we're gonna have a spray at the bottom. And so we want the candle base to end approximately the length of the bristles and the um, metal clasp that's holding them to the wooden base. So I'm gonna say about here. So I've kind of marked where I'm starting the top of the candle and the bottom. We're not going to worry about the edges right away. The most important thing we want to get started with is putting down the center. We can make our candle fatter. Once we paint it, we can't make it thinner. So we want to start in the center and just put a line going up. And that's going to be the center of the candle. When I did the sample, it got fatter as I cleaned my edges. So it wasn't initially as fat as you had. You don't want to block out the outer edges. You want to just work from here and keep going up and down and get started on laying out how thick the candle is going to be. And again, don't worry about the bottom edge or the top edge right now. We're just blocking in the candle. And your brush is clean now. So if you need to take your cup and scoop some more onto your palette, you should be able to do that without worrying about contaminating this because we'll need white for when we're working a little later. All right, so I have plenty of paint. If it's thick and you're having a hard time with it dragging when you're going up and down, dip your brush very gently, just the tip into water. So kind of use your fingers. If you're really um, concerned about the width, you could try to use a ruler or another point of reference. You could say that you don't want to go, you know, past a certain point on either your paintbrush or anything else you have around you. I'm trying to make sure visually that I'm keeping equal sides of blue. I don't want to have my candle off center. One of the strengths of this image is that the candle is a central focus. Now, one way to do your edges of the candle is instead of holding your brush like this, you're gonna hold it straight up and down. And I'm just taking my brush and I'm going straight up to get the outside edge nice and clean without anything dragging. Okay, and I'm looking, I think I'm getting close to how thick I want it. I might go a little bit thicker. And we want our edges to be straight, not wiggly. So it's really good to just take a breath and go straight down the edge like this. So if I place my brush at the top, take a breath, and then exhale and pull down. Step back if you need to, to make sure it looks equal and even. I think I'm pretty happy with this. And then I'm going to use the edge of the brush, dip it into the paint, and I'm going to just go from one side to the other. And if you notice, I'm slightly curving it. 
to give the candle depth, you want it to have a little bit of a curved edge. We are going to put some um, plant life around the bottom. So if it's not perfect, that's okay. The top, we want to arc even a little more. This is going to be like a semicircle, like this. And I'm bringing it on both sides, like that. And that's going to help give the candle even more depth when we paint the top part of the candle. So I have my candle blocked in. I have it, it's got a big bump at the top, but then I'm going to even that out when I do um, some definition. Trying to make it nice and clean. I'm using my brush sideways. And I think I feel good with how that is. Okay. So once I have that done, I'm now going to use a different brush and we're going to start to add some detail. So you can put your chip brush into your water cup. And while the white is still wet, I'm going to leave a clean outer edge on one side, just for definition. I'm going to scoop some of the blue onto the plate. Again, I'm going to rub my brush to get excess off because we don't want it to be heavy, heavy. But I'm going to use this brush and just kind of go from top to bottom and stroke some blue in. I'm going to start to create the top part of the candle by creating a little shape up at the top like this. I don't want to see the canvas showing through. So anywhere you see the pattern of the canvas, stroke your brush up and down to like eliminate that. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue to the side. And again, I'm just quickly while the brush glides through wet paint, stroking it up and down. And we'll go back when it's dry and add a little more definition, but we want to get some of the color in now. If you want a clean line at the bottom, place your brush and pull up, and that will give you a good edge at the bottom. Okay, so I have my candle, and I'm starting to add a little bit of blue to give it definition. I'm going to work more in up at the top, like this, making kind of like a C. And then I'm pulling it through the rest of the candle. I'm going to leave a clean white edge around the top, like a lip. And I'm using my brush. I'm using it and pulling side to side to stroke the color in like this. All right. A little bit more right here. Just pull down. And I think I'm going to stop there. We can always go back and add more, but I don't want to overdo it because it's a lot harder to clean up. I'm going to clean my brush off right on my palette like this. And now I'm going to be bold and I'm going to go over to the brown. And I'm just going to touch the edges of the brush to the brown. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to add a little bit of brown in the base and maybe a little bit up here along the top ledge of the candle. And I'm gonna place my brush and then pull down. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, place my brush and then pull down. And I'm even gonna put a little bit along the top. I'm not gonna go crazy with the brown on the candle. We just want a little bit of touches of color and I'm gently stroking the brush up. Sometimes you'll see some of the blue come through and that's okay. So you see, I don't have a whole lot of brown. Um, you can take your brush and just do like a little touch. And here I might work it in a little. And you see how I'm just stroking my brush up and down, up and down. And that's giving me a little bit of the brown getting pulled in. 
I might go back. I want to add a little bit of blue over here. And then pull it up. Okay. And I'm going to do a little bit of darker blue down here. I'm leaving my lip across the bottom, just like I'm leaving the lip across the top. So there's still a, a white edge here and a white edge up here. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do a little more dark blue. You'll find that your painting, it's getting dry. So when you put new colors on, it's not blending as much and that's, that's all all right. We're just gonna keep putting a little bit of blue here Touch of dark blue there. So we've added brown and blue to the pillar candle. And then I'm going to wipe my brush on my palette again, get most of the paint out. And I'm going to, on one side of your yellow cup, just do a scoop and add that. Yellow is pretty thick. And if you're not careful, the yellow will turn green. So we have to wait for things to dry to add the yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and one of the tricks that we're gonna to have to be mindful of is when you wanna put yellow on, not only can it easily mix and become green or the yellow and the brown will actually also make it green, but it will um, be translucent and not as bright and as vivid as this. So where we're gonna be putting yellow, we're gonna put white. So I still have my, my cup here with plenty of white. I'm gonna scoop some more onto the plate. And I'm going to do very light, a halo circle around where I think the, the flame would reflect. So I'm gonna kind of just take my brush and go in a circular motion. And this is the one time where it's okay for the canvas to be showing through. It's okay to have the little dotted stipple, stipple that the canvas does. And I'm just blocking in some white for where the, the flame is going to reflect its light. I'm also going to use this brush to make my flame. I'm going to start at the top and just pull down and create something that looks like a candle flame. And here's the thing that's beautiful about a candle flame. It's not perfect, it evolves. And so there's no wrong flame. This one does not look like this one. Yours doesn't have to either. There's gonna be a big gap where we're gonna go back and add our um, little candle wick. But for now, that's my candle flame. And I'm going to put three circles down the bottom here. And the way I'm gonna do that, and I'll show you on this plate here. So this was where I practiced. Before I committed to the canvas, I practiced on a paper plate, but I'm gonna take my brush, put it on your canvas, and then literally spin your fingers. And that's how we're gonna get the circles. Have your brush with white paint on it, sit it straight down onto the canvas, and then spin it around and you're gonna get a circle that way. And that's going to be the little berries at the bottom. So down here, I'm going to put in, in white, one circle, two circles, and then a third. And I'm thinking I might put more because I'm off center. And that's the beauty of this. There's no wrong. I might put another one here. And if you wanted to or need to, you could put a second one down there, okay? So there are my berries that are going to be yellow, but we have to block them in in white first. We're also gonna work on the greens and the greens are a really fun addition. I'll use this again as a sample. You take your brush and you want your brush to be nice and flat. Right now I have a big fat chunk. Can you see that hanging on the side? You don't want any chunks of paint or any blobs of paint. You want to take your brush and go back and forth so your paint surface and your brush are nice and neat and clean. And in order to create what looks like greenery at the bottom, 
we're literally just going to place the brush straight like this and then go back and forth like this. And that's going to be how we create the greens. And again, this is something where if it doesn't look perfect, you don't have to worry. I'm going to mix with the white for this bottom layer, some white, and I'm going to touch my brush to the brown. So we're going to get a kind of grayish, brownish, slightly off white color. And if you can see, it's not dark at all. It's just slightly darker than the white. And that's going to be how I lay down my greenery. So I'm just going to very boldly go in and start marking in. Okay. And I'm just going to keep doing that and put in a bunch of sprays. And they're going to kind of meet down here near the berries. I'm going to do it on both sides. Again, it's just the tiniest bit of brown mixed with white. And then I'm pulling it like this and creating. And it should have like a tan kind of look to it. We'll go back over this later with some white and make it pop on top of this. So I have two facing up like a V and then I'm going to put some facing down. And I'm going to go down. Again, every now and then take your brush and make sure it's nice and flat by going back and forth, top and bottom. And okay, so that's my greenery. I might put another little one down here. And I think I'm going to leave, oh, I got a little spot that drips, so I'm going to cover that up like that. And that's my base for my green. We're going to go back over that in white. I think at this point, this part of your canvas should feel dry to touch. I'm going to clean my brush. I'm using my paper towel to blot. And I am going to now go to my yellow and I'm going to start to work on the flame. I'm going to pull from the bottom and curve around and put a nice bright yellow happening where my flame is. Not the entire flame. I'm going to do the outside edges of the flame and then I can always go back in and um, either darken or lighten the center. I'm going to do the same thing with the yellow where the white is. And I'm going to just go around in a circle. And you can see right away the yellow is nice and bright over the white. I'm not covering all of the white. I'm leaving some of it on the white side. But the majority will get colored. And I am putting a little bit of yellow beyond where I put the white. A, and you'll see what I was talking about, how when you do that, the yellow is like transparent there. So that's why we put the white down first as a base. And we're still going to go back in later and put the wick. We're not worried about that right now. Okay. We're also going to drag some of this yellow into our candle for highlight. So I'm going to stroke some yellow from top to bottom. You don't want to cover too much of it. It's just like an accent. And I'm trying to be equal in how I spread it around. So I just have these little highlights of yellow now on my candle. I'm going to put a little bit up here in this um, top part of the candle. I'm going to go back in with a little bit of white and some blue. I mean, like how dark all of that was. And 
Okay, so I have the top of my candle has a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow. You'll see some strokes of yellow on the sides and the bottom. And I'm going to clean my brush since I had dragged some blue. And I want to go back to working with my yellow. I'm going to come down and I'm going to color in these berries at the bottom that were white. I'm going to color them in with yellow. If your berry's not dry, it would be two-toned and have a little bit of white, and that's okay. It's a little challenging with our angle brush. If we were meeting in person, I'd have a small, what I would call a detail brush that would make it easier. But if you spin your brush, you should be able to get as close to a circle as possible. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm coloring in each of the little berries at the bottom, however many you need. Making them yellow. And it should be a nice bright yellow on top of the white. Here my white is really thick. Um, I'm finger painting a little and pulling some of that off. So now I'm putting yellow on this berry. And you can see they're nice and bright, just like the top where the candle is. There. If you put a glob on, you can kind of make the flame look like it's flickering. Same thing up in here. If I do a little bit of a thick arch of yellow. Okay, so I have my flame tapered around. I might, oops, yikes. I might go and add a little bit of white. I have a really big blue here and I kind of want to lighten that up a little. So I'm just going to add a little. Thank you, Susan. When we get paint, this paint comes off if you, if you clean it up immediately. So if you do get it on your clothing or a surface in your home, you want to try and wipe it up right away. Um, that should work just fine with soap and water. So I'm pretty happy now with the taper around my plane. Um, I'm going to work a little bit more on the top of my candle here. I want just a little bit more definition. So just a little, some dark blue here, and then I want maybe a little blind white. I'm not even cleaning my brush in between. I'm just dipping it and dragging the extra paint off on my palette. So you can see on my palette, anytime I had colors that I didn't want, I just scrub it off. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think I'm ready to go ahead and put my wick in. Again, if you have a chunk of paint on your brush, it's going to make for a thick one. So if you brush, take your brush and stroke it back and forth, back and forth, it will make the edges of the brush nice and clean and thin. You want a nice solid amount of brown on your brush. And then you want to start midway and pull up and then go to the top and pull down from your plane. And there's your wick, okay? And then I'm going to use that brown just to put another little spot here. And I think I want it more here, okay? So there's my candle with its definition. And then we're gonna work on the greens here, but you'll need your brush to be clean. And you wanna put clean, pure white on, I'm going to just be dipping back and forth in my cup for that. And on top of this tan, I'm going to do a second layer, and I'm going to try my best to keep my brush nice and flat. So I'm stroking it back and forth, flipping front, back, front, back. And then if I go like this, I can start putting a second layer and give it a little more definition. And it gives it a little more dimensionality, makes it look thicker and fuller. And I'm just pulling towards the center like this. And I'm going to keep doing that on each of these. And again, I want to remind you there's no right or wrong. These are, I guess they're like flock greens. Remember when? Black Christmas trees were a fad. So we're just putting white and creating and 
by having the other color underneath, we've given it some dimensionality and made it look a lot thicker and fuller. And I'm just kind of making a V, one side, one side, one side, one side, back and forth to create the greens. Okay, so I have that side done. I'm gonna go over to my other side and do the same thing. Kind of back and forth, rocking my brush from side to side. One line, one line like this. Line, line, line. Having them sort of meet in the middle. If you wanna have it overlap your candle a little, you can do that. Um, you can pull a line down through the center from like the top where the stem that all the needles would be coming from. You do that and then again go outward in a, in a V shape. I have another one over here. And I'm just bringing my brush in and out, in and out, in and out. And there's no right or wrong. There's not too many. You want to keep them as thin as you can. You don't want to get too thick because then they won't look like needles. They'll look more like leaves. And I think um, having it look like needles is part of the, the winter theme behind this. And so I'm just going through. And another thing here. And I, I'm going to go back over my um, yellow berries a little with clean yellow paint because they look a little lumpy, lumpy. So if you have that issue as well, I recommend having your brush be clean and then going right into the yellow to try and clean. And I'm just doing my little circle. anyone has any questions or anything that they're struggling with, feel free to message um, us through the chat and we can give you advice. This is a nice, simple design. The colors are beautiful. I think the blue and having it light at the bottom and this darkness just really makes it pop. And I like that we kept it minimalistic with just really three colors showing the brown kind of doesn't show it more add shadow and depth to the image. Okay, so I think I think I'm not going to keep playing with it because sometimes you can overthink your painting and maybe make things muddier or um, not as as fresh as when you initially lay your color down. So I'm going to stop playing with mine. I've got my berries. I've got my candle. I'm happy with the way my candle looks. It's tall and elegant. And I like my little flame curving up at the top and the halo around. Mm -hmm.